So a lot of you guys always ask me, why psychiatry? Well, if you've been watching my channel for a while, then you already know my story and you already know that I've had and I still do have a lot of interests. The possibilities of being a PA are endless. A lot of you have already watched my video, what's it like to be a psychiatry PA, on top of watching one of my very first YouTube videos on insight into PA school when I was a student and all the resources that I used. Well, basically what I wanted to do today was provide you guys with an update on where I am in the profession and my specialty and how I'm feeling as a new provider in my first couple of months in the practice. And at first, in my previous video, Videos, I shared a lot of excitement and a lot of new and exciting information for me as a new psychiatry PA um, and it was all cute and dandy but now that it's been a couple of months like almost a year um, I definitely see growth even in my documentation and my notes and things like that which is expected like I mean if you don't see growth then something is wrong right so recently in one of my CME subscriptions um, I ran across this really neat article called advice to young psychiatrists from a very old one and I would like to go over a couple of key points that really stood out to me and I was very happy and surprised to see some of the things that he mentioned I'm already doing but there are a a lot of key important things to also keep in mind and remember so let's get into it so again I thoroughly enjoyed this article I feel like everything that dr. Francis shared in this article was a gem and it's, it, it is extremely helpful I couldn't thank him enough um, for taking the time out to think about young psychiatrists and the key things that we need to know because this is definitely now that I read the article I got the print version in my office is definitely words to live by and words to practice by and things to keep in mind when seeing patients okay so one of the key things that he said is no meeting with any patient is ever routine for them so it should never be routine for you and that hit home because you know every patient is different and you want to give every patient the proper um, attention respect um, as you would any other patient and so that just brought home the whole reason why I went into medicine whether I was doing psychiatry family medicine whether I was doing surgery never get used to just routine like I'm gonna just go to work see these patients go home like it's it's my passion what I, why I do what I do and um, so that really just brought everything home for me I really appreciate him for listing that and that was number two number one I have to go backwards I went from two to one but number one is your patients will be your best teachers um, I can't say that enough how often I mean we can sit here and read a book all day but medicine is never meant to be black and white I mean sometimes even you learn that in PA school for those of you that are in PA school you can testify that there are atypical symptoms and presentations that even a textbook can't present to you or prepare you for you just got to know what you know know what you don't know and know when to consult but you learn best from your patients. They will be your best teachers. So, and I mean, that is also a way to keep you grounded and a way to keep you humble. But another one he said that really stood out to me was number 21, because there's a whole list. I'm sorry, there's a whole list. He labeled each one of them, so I'm going through them, just picking the key ones, because I'm not gonna sit here and read you all the article. But number 21 is do not ne negotiate. You want to negotiate with the patient, the treatment plan, you never want to dictate. And that's one of the things that I mentioned in my previous video. Um, always let the patient know that number one, like in ethics, like they have autonomy. Like they can choose whether they want to take it or not. Your job is to provide patient education to the patient and um, basically educate, you know, educate, create awareness um, about why you're doing what you're doing with the side effects, what's the risk versus benefit basically. I think that this article thoroughly describes everything that I'm learning, everything that I've been implementing, but everything that I'm going to continue to improve and do better. Medicine is a growing field. It changes every day and you will never know everything. Even if you've been practicing for 50 some years, you'll never know everything. Everything that you knew will be out of date. I mean, that's just it. Medicine grows and some people get with it. Some people get left behind. And I really feel like, of course, medicine is truly an art and um, 
you will never again know everything so it's best to stay humble and stay grounded and that's exactly what this article did for me so guys without keeping this video too long this is where I am right now I am um, learning who I am as a provider my practice style is constantly improving and growing my documentation is constantly improving and growing and I'm just enjoying the ride I'm enjoying the patience I'm enjoying my workflow I'm still working 8 to 5 Monday through Thursday and I'm still working half days on Friday I'm still doing telemedicine and with that being said if you're interested in hearing more about how telemedicine is for me what it's like what type of patients I see um, Stay tuned because I'm going to be sharing in my next video the kind of the process of telemedicine. Some of you probably already got the gist down, but I want to give you my scoop. So stay tuned. Turn on that bell notification button to be notified when that upload does appear on YouTube. And until next time, guys, take care. See you later.